Winter brings the feeling of nesting or hunkering down. It also means the picking up of a piece or two of handicrafts. The oven works overtime for those holiday family favorites, and knitters dash to their local yarn stores to squeeze in one more scarf or a pair of socks for that last-minute gift. As you are crafting away, Barmaids continues to handcraft yummy goodness for your skin. Barmaids handcrafts their products with natural skin-loving oils and butters, everything your skin needs to keep it soft and moisturized, and nothing it doesn't. Since you are likely to use your hands more during the holiday season, let Lolo keep them moisturized. It's simple. Get your hands wet, shake the water off, and get your Lolo on before you pick up the needles, cookie cutter, or drop spindle. Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is December 15th, and this is episode number 85. Yep, 85. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we're going to probably have a shorter show than normal. I am, I think I talked a week or so ago about changing things up a little bit on the podcast. I still haven't decided exactly how I'm going to change things up, but uh, I'm going to start implementing some of the things. It's not going to include getting rid of the cats, but Sammy is over here attacking everything. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to think through exactly how I want to change things up. I would like to be able to do a podcast that's about 30 to 45 minutes and um, add a little bit of like tutorial kind of stuff within the podcast. It still might be a few weeks or maybe even a couple of months before I actually get, get it completely revamped the way I want it. But um, it's, I'm hoping that it will provide you guys with um, a little bit more information rather than just me showing you my knitting all the time. Although I know a lot of people like just to see the knitting and hear about how my process has been, but I'd like I'd like the podcast to become more informational, I guess. Anyway, um, please don't touch that. So anyway, so that's my plan. Is I'd I'd like to to make the podcast um, more information on the informational side rather than just me holding up my project and showing you how far I've gotten each week. Um, I do want to start uh, by. St start by saying, um, reminding everybody about the knit along that is currently going on, which is the mitten knit along. Cody, Cody, stop it. Come here. Come, come over here. Come up here. Come sit up here with me. Come on. Come on, sit up here with me. Come on. Come here. Crazy. Are you going to be bad? I know you're being bad. Um, so the mitten it along runs to the end of December. Lay down, please. Runs to the end of December, and there is loads of prizes to be had um, with that knit along. And I think we have maybe five or six entries so far. There's still two full weeks um, to finish your mittens. And I am still hoping to finish my mittens, although I have not worked on them this week again. This week I spent a lot of time just finalizing things, which I'll get to shortly. But, um, I may have to just stop this because this is crazy. L leave my stuff alone. Just sit still, please. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so we have the mitten knit along that is running till the end of the month, and like I said, I have not worked on my mittens this week, but maybe next week I will work on them. I also want to mention some of the upcoming um, cows and sows that we're having. In January, I would like to have a um, a spin along, and I'm calling it um, Spinuary. And it's just going to be everybody spinning, you know. So if you spin, you can um, enter to win. I think I have at least one um, braid of fiber to give away. Um, and if we get a bunch of people that enter, maybe I'll 
see about getting another one or if, if um, one of the dyers would like to donate a braid of fiber for the spin along in January. The rules of that spin along will be just any uh, four ounce braid, bump, whatever a fiber. It has to be at least four ounces. Um, and you just spin it up and post it in January. It can be started before January. So if you're currently working on something, um, that can count towards the spin along. Um, but it has to be completed in January. Uh, plied or if it's going to be single, it can be just a single, but it has to be off the bobbins and shown as a skein. So that will be January. And then in February, we're going to do the Finish It or Frog It February again. Um, it's, it just seems like a good time of year to do it. I know that a lot of some of the other podcasts are doing December stash downs or deep stash and um, getting things off the needles before the new year and stuff like that. But I'm sure there are still some people that won't have that won't take care of it in December because of all the other holiday commitments. So we're going to do the February finish it or frog it. Cody, still. I'm having to hold my stuff because Cody is just rubbing up against everything and things are going to be on the floor in a minute. Um, so those are the upcoming, the um, upcoming knit alongs and spin alongs and what have you. Uh, the next thing on my show notes for today is to talk about apps. And I meant to pull this up. I went to go pull it up before I um, started recording, but then I got sidetracked. Okay, so you guys know that I'm using Downcast for my podcasts now, and I'm loving it. I still love it. I don't know. There was an issue, I guess, with Downcast and that they fixed recently with a recent update. I never had a problem with Downcast because I always stream. I think it had something to do with downloading the um, podcasts. But I did occasionally I have trouble streaming um, really large files or stuff like that. But it also has to do with the fact that I'm watching on two times speed, so maybe I'm not down. It's not downloading quick enough to keep up, and it keeps pausing. Uh, but that's not that's not my issue. What was happening with a few of my podcasts is they weren't automatically updating. And I couldn't figure out why. I would have to go into that particular podcast to check for new updates. And they were some of my regular podcasts. And I couldn't figure out why it wasn't happening. And I was like, this is crazy. And I thought, it almost had me to the point where I wasn't wanting to use Downcast anymore. Because if it's not going to update my podcast and tell me when there's a new episode, why bother? But then I found out why. Um, are you going to get up now because I'm pushing you? Okay. Um, then I found out why. There's this thing called auto, auto refresh feed. And it is in the settings. So if you go to your podcast, okay, um, if you go to your podcast, the, the little settings button down here at the bottom, you click on that. And then it will say auto refresh on or off. Anyway, so a couple of my podcasts were not auto updating and I found out it was because that auto refresh feed was off. So I did have to go through all of my podcasts, all 120 some podcasts, I think. 133 now. <laughs> and, um, and make sure that they were all updated. Um, I was catching up last week on my podcast, and now I'm behind again. I currently have um, 19 and a half hours of audio and 29 and a half hours of video to watch. So I think some of those are going to be just dropped off. Not not dropped off, but sometimes I'll skip an episode here or there and watch other podcasts just so that I can kind of get myself caught up. Um, within this new, this new format, I would like to have a segment on apps. And I don't know that I'm going to do it every week, but uh, there are going to be weeks that I'm going to talk about apps. Um, this week, I do want to mention uh, about the, um, the new Craftsy app for the iPhone. 
They've had the Craftsy app for the iPad, but they just recently came out with the iPhone one. In fact, I downloaded the one for the iPad and I was hoping to get one on the iPhone as well, but I went searching for it and it wasn't there and it just so happened that that search feature was still up on my phone the next time I went into my, um, into my app, my, um, app store and I saw that it was available and it kind of freaked me out there for a minute because I could have sworn that I had searched for it before and I couldn't find it. So I just downloaded it and everything. So, and they must have just come out with it that day or the day before or something because then later I saw an email about the new um, Craftsy app for um, the iPhone, which is great because like, like um, a lot of people, I want to be able to watch my classes on the go and it's perfect for the iPhone if I'm at work and I want to just watch a quick a quick lesson or what have you and usually if I'm knitting or something at the same time I've got my um, my pattern on my iPad so it makes it a lot easier just to watch it on the iPhone which is really great um, another app which I've mentioned before is the don't starve they did have an update on some new improvements recently and um, I just played again yesterday almost got killed by a buffalo I accidentally attacked him and um, those things, if you attack the buffaloes, this is the first time that I've ever gotten away from them because I just ran like heck. I just got the heck out of there. And I think I was running for a good portion of the day um, trying to get away from him. And eventually he did give up, but I it took a while. It took a long time. So don't accidentally attack a buffalo just before dark because you're going to be in trouble because if you stop at all, he is going to get you. And just don't, just don't attack the buffalo. That's all I can say. You can't kill them. As far as I know so far, you haven't, you can't kill the buffalo. But what I did find out earlier this week was that if those dogs are chasing you and you run into the buffalo herd, the buffaloes will attack the dogs because what will happen is when the when the dogs are chasing you and they come to attack you and you kind of are in the midst of the buffalo herd they will accidentally attack the buffalo and then the buffalo will attack the dogs and I've gotten a couple of dogs killed that way which is good to know so if you ever are being attacked by those dogs run into the buffalo herd and then the next the next two apps I just started playing today on um, the iPad I think they are Facebook apps. I don't know if they're on Facebook or only on the iPad and the iPhone, but they are Oregon Trail and Pioneers. They're both very similar games. I haven't decided which one I like best, but I just started playing them. They're both the kind of, um, you know, Pioneer games, you know, where you set up a new town and what have you. So they'll be fun to, to check out. Okay, so those are my apps. And again, like I said, I'm, I'd like to be able to do at least once a month talk about different apps that I'm trying out and checking out and maybe do reviews on, on different apps or games that I'm playing. But probably not every week. So let's talk about my finished objects. And with my finished objects, I have a couple. I'm wearing one. It is my shawl that I designed, and I have, like I said, I have a few people that are going to be test knitting it. I am hoping to get the pattern completely written up um, this weekend so that I can get it out to them and get them started on it, but at the very latest, it's going to be by the end of the week, so because I'd like to have the pattern almost completely written. Um, so that if there's changes that have to be made, all I have to do is update that. But I am very excited about it. It turned out really nice. I really like how it worked out. I like the size. It's about 55 to 60 inches. It's about 60 inches um, wings. It's, my, it's about my wingspan, and I'm, um, well, it's not quite my wingspan. It doesn't go all the way to my tip, tips of my fingers. but So probably about 55 about 55 inches and it's 26 inches long and it's the perfect size for either wearing around your neck um, as like a scarf like I had it or around your shoulders uh, so I really like it and it takes up approximately 400 yards 
I'm gonna say actually I have to weigh it to see exactly but it's um this was Knit Picks um, Glimmer and it came in the two two fifty gram balls and I think there were twenty two hundred and twenty yards per ball um and I have a bit of the second one left. I didn't quite use it all, but it would take basically one um, one skein of sock yarn. The cats are... Marty and Crystal are over here on the back of the couch, and they're looking at something in the ceiling. I'm not quite sure what it is. <laughs> um, but it probably take probably around 400 yards, I'm going to say. And I'm going to try and write the pattern... Um, so that you can shorten it up a bit because I'd, I'd like to try and make um, a, a, a slightly smaller shawl as well. So I'm going to write a little bit of a, um, you know, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can do it at this particular point. So that's done. And again, if you're planning on being a test knitter, I do have your all your information in my... Um, my Ravelry box. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to do a PDF and put it out on um, Dropbox and then send you a link so that you can just go download the PDF and go from there. So, And then hopefully we can get it test knit and I can get the pattern actually released sometime in January. That's my goal. The second finished object I have for this week is actually spinning. And it is my um, Three Rivers, Three Waters Farms fiber. It's the Merino. Cody, where? Cody, what are you doing? You're eating alpaca. Can you please come over here? Come over here. Stop eating the fiber. I must have fiber hanging from my wheel over there because he's over there eating the alpaca fiber. Anyway, this is the um, Three Waters and it's merino and I how I did this would you like to get up here again with me come on up here come up here come up here and stop eating stuff I took the braid it is not a gradient but what I did was I split the braid into four bit four long strips and I spun them end to end and then I Navajo applied them this has not been um, washed yet. I just finished uh, applying it last night and um, took it off the bobbin. It seems like there's parts of it that are a little kinky, but it's it is a it's not quite balanced. But again, you don't really want it balanced when it comes off. But um, but there it is. And I love how it turned out. I really like the three ply. I am, I'm pretty sure that most of what I do from now on is going to be a three ply. I really like the look of a three ply yarn. And I'm not sure how many yards I got out of this because I just um, took it off the bobbin last night. And I haven't even counted my wraps or anything like that or checked the wraps per inch or anything. Um, it, it is a fingering weight that, that I do know. But I really like how it came out, and I can't wait to, to knit it up. It is a Navajo ply, so I probably won't make socks or anything with it like that. But I think it would make a gorgeous shawl. So that's my second finished object. Are you going to sit still for a couple minutes? Okay? Yeah. Um, and that's all the finished objects I have this week. I have one whip to show you. Hi. Hi going to lay on my lap? I do have one whip to show you, which brings me to another thing that I'm going to be changing about the podcast. I find that um, showing you my progress, you know, even if it's minuscule every, minuscule every week, it just seems redundant. So I'm going to try to only show you my finished objects and maybe one or two other whips, unless I have um, a lot of information to share with you on a work in process for whatever reason. 
This week I don't. In fact, this week I spent a lot of my time spinning this fiber. So that's why you don't really have a whole lot to show. I spun this fiber every night this week when I came home from work, which was all of my knitting time in the evening, which is probably about two hours. And I didn't do any knitting at home this week, which is why I don't have much knitting progress this week. I do have some other things that I worked on, but I'm only going to show you the uh, crosswords at the coffee shop. And I am almost to the, I think it's Sammy, Sammy. Okay. I'm going to have to pause this and go upstairs and get them something to eat or at least get Steve to feed them because they're going crazy. So can you hang tight for just a moment? Okay, I talked Steve into giving them a snack because <laughs> they were driving me crazy. <laughs> it is um, later in the afternoon and they didn't get a, a midday snack. Usually on the weekends, oh my gosh, it's five o'clock. <laughs> I guess it is time for their snack. Oh my gosh, this day just flew by. It probably didn't help that I slept in till almost 9 o'clock and then Steve and I sat on the couch all morning watching shows and finally got up at about, I don't know, 1.30 or 2 o'clock to start doing something. But it was a nice day <laughs> of just sitting around doing nothing. But here's my progress. There's my uh, my marker from last week. I had just started this last week. And it's going quite nicely. I really like this uh, pattern. In fact, I might even do this as a scarf. Just do this lace pattern as a scarf um, later on. Because it does turn out really nice. Just gives a nice, a really nice design. Um but I would probably make it a little bit longer because as a scarf it probably isn't quite long enough as like a regular regular scarf but it is coming along um, I am almost to the point of doing I don't know if it's stockinette or garter stitch but the the top portion so that should be done this week I would think so that's my that's my plan is to um, show you the finished objects, try and have at least one finished object for you each week, and um, show you the finished objects, and then maybe one or two of my works in progress. So I did not work on my even star, so I think I am behind again on that. I did not work on the knit swirl at all or my mittens. Um, I might have worked on my socks a bit, my stripy socks, but what 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 is there to show you on that? You know, it's stripy sock. So that's that. On my spinning, like I said, I finished up the um, the three rivers or three. I don't know why I want to call it three rivers, three waters farms, and I am going to start something new on my sidekick, which is what that the wheel that that just came off of. I was thinking about starting a semi-solid, however, or either semi-solid or just plain white. However, because I am spinning the alpaca, which is a um, like a chocolatey brown on the ladybug, I'm thinking that I need something with a little bit of color or some variation rather than just a semi-solid. So I'm going to decide what I'm going to start on the sidekick. Um, I'm thinking about possibly um, some wool gatherings that I received from the Completely Twisted and Arbitrary group that when, when wool gatherings was their um, dire of the month. I haven't been spinning my stuff. In fact, maybe I will just wait and see who the um, the dyer is for January and then actually do the spin along with the group. I don't know yet because I haven't been doing the spin along with the group because I've already had things on the wheel and by the time I get my yarn and everything, it's just way past the time. So I haven't been doing that. 
but I would like to be able to do one of the spin, spin alongs with them. So the things that are coming up on my, to be put on my needles, I am starting a test knit for somebody else. Um, I should be able to get that finished this week and be able to show you the finished object next week. I don't know. I think she would let me show it on the podcast, but, um, I typically don't do a whole lot of test knits for people. I do my knitting for hire, um, when it's, when it's asked for, but, um, I don't do a lot of test knits mostly because I don't want to have to buy yarn for a test knit. And a lot of times I have my yarn earmarked for certain things and I don't typically have a lot of miscellaneous um, skeins of say DK, worsted, sport, Aaron, all that. I don't, I don't buy that type of yarn unless I'm buying it for a specific project. So sometimes it's hard for me to do a test knit for somebody um, if it doesn't, if it requires some other kind of yarn other than fingering weight. And even, Cody, don't, don't start. Even if it um, requires something that I have, sometimes I don't want to use a skein that might be better suited for something else. I know, I'm crazy. That's how I've ended up with so much stash is because I always have to buy new yarn when I want to start a project. Are you feeling better now? Are you going to sit still? But other than that, I am planning on trying to just get my projects completed. I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of overwhelmed and it's an overwhelmed feeling because I have so many things on the needles and because I want to knit so many things. I look at my stash behind me and I think, oh, I want to knit that or I want to knit that and um, I want to start this sweater, I want to do that sweater or I want to use that yarn. And I get overwhelmed because I want to do it all now and I know that I can't do it all now so it kind of gets overwhelming that way. And sometimes the way I cope with the overwhelming feeling is I just don't knit at all, which doesn't solve any problems. But sometimes it's a good thing. And, and what I do instead is I, I game or I read. And um, that sometimes helps me get, get back into the swing of my knitting and just get my projects done. So I'm hoping that over the next few weeks and the first part of January, I'm going to be cleaning off my needles and getting things completed so that I can not be so overwhelmed and get back down to a reasonable number of projects. I usually do that, you know, once or twice a year, I'll just get to the point where I need to reduce the number of um, projects that are currently on the needles and I'll get it down to three or four and then that will work for work great for a while and then all of a sudden I bump it back up. I don't know. I think I have like 12 projects on the needles right now, which is crazy. Okay. Um I did this week uh, post two new designs. Actually, they're not new designs on my my uh, my shop. Um I posted a PDF of the bubble afghan before it was just a link on my blog, so I posted a PDF of that so it's easier to download and store in your Ravelry library. And I also posted the Tie One On Socks, which was an entry at um, to the um, Hill Country Yarns, I don't even remember what year it was, it might have been 2009 maybe? Um, they had a, a contest for sock yarn patterns. So I did post um, the PDF. That one is posted for, I don't know, it's like maybe $5, maybe three fifty. I can't remember now. Um, but you can purchase that pattern now, and I posted the PDF of the Bubble Afghan, which is free. And I am hoping to um, put a PDF of the seed stitch collar up there as well um, because that's just a link on my blog at this point as well. So hopefully 
in the coming months I can have that link right on Ravelry as well. Okay. The next thing is about the um, Random Acts of Pattern Tuesday. I want to first start by saying thank you to both Beagle Mom Knitter and Natalie Ford for their um, wraps on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. I did not print out my patterns or anything, but um, I did want to thank them. I don't print out my patterns anymore. I always keep them on my Ravelry library. But one thing I found this week, and maybe I'm just late to the game. Maybe everybody knew about this already. But I like to I like to keep track of who gives me which patterns. And I really didn't know that there was a way to, to, to be able to go back. Because I've been saving the emails that come to me um, when I'm gifted a pattern. Because then I can go back and look at, at those. But I found out today that you can find the information about how the pattern, if you purchased the pattern or if you were gifted the pattern, right on your Ravelry page. So if you go to, um, if you go to your pattern, your library, okay, and you click on the pattern in your library. And let me just... This is what will come up, okay? It shows you the pattern and you can download it. But there's this thing right over here just next to the picture that says purchased. And if you click on that, it takes you to another page that gives you the message that you were given when you were it was sent to you as a gift. So I thought that was really, really cool. But in addition to that, I also added some notes. There's a, another little thing over here called Edit Notes. And I added um, some notes here. And I just put who it was gifted to me by and the date. And it's just easier than having to go to that other, other screen if I wanted to see who, who gifted me that particular pattern. But I just thought that was really cool that you could go back and look at all those things. So I am planning on going back through all of my gifted patterns and making notes on there. And then making sure that I can, you know, mention them when I actually knit those, those patterns at some point. So I thought that was quite interesting. Maybe everybody already knew that, but I didn't. And I thought it was very cool. Okay, so we have a barmaids giveaway this week, and I've mentioned before how wonderful the Lolo Bar works on dry skin, and I can attest to tell you that even when you stop using it for a while, it really makes a huge difference, and you don't have to use it. Um, multiple times during the day. You only have to put it on once a day and it only takes a few days to really take care of extremely dry skin. I think I've mentioned before that occasionally I will get a patch of dry skin on my palm and I think the reason for that is is when I play games a lot my palm is on that mouse you know for a good couple hours and, it, and it, I think it um, produces a callus on my palm. I mean, it gets so bad that it actually, the skin peels off of my palm. And um, a few weeks ago, it got really bad. And no matter how much lotion, if you put lotion on, it just does not help. But the Lolo Bar, I put the Lolo Bar on, and within three or four days of applying the Lolo Bar, my skin was back to smooth, soft, soft skin. And it is just amazing how well that Lolo Bar keeps the moisture locked in your skin. So if you have extremely dry skin, I highly recommend the Lolo Bar for that. Because let me tell you, I have some dry patches when I get it on my palm. And if I don't use the Lolo Bar in the winter time, my legs, and just everything gets really dry. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that I don't 
always drink enough water, but it is awesome as far as um, keeping your skin moisturized. So this week's winner for the, uh, the $15 coupon is number 26, K116, and that is Kathy. So congratulations, Kathy. You are the winner of the coupon this week. So just get in contact with me, uh, PM me on Ravelry, and I will uh, PM you the coupon code. So congratulations. And the last thing that I have for you this week are the um, Knittopia sponsors. We did receive a couple of um, sponsorships this week, uh, starting with uh, Never Enough Time, which is an Etsy shop. And she has some fabulous um, yarns. I think she's fairly new. I just placed an order with her um, a few weeks ago, and then she decided she wanted to do some mini skeins for the the, um, the goodie bags. And then Wool to Die For, which has fabulous um, yarn for dyeing. And I just got a few samples from her this week as well, and trying to decide which which yarns I'd like to get because I've purchased a few different um, packs from her before and it's always hard to decide which um, which yarns I want to try so it was nice that I could get those samples and uh, and try some things out before I actually place an order for 10 skeins and then also Brightcraft, which is also an Etsy shop. And I actually ordered a few bags from her, one for myself and then some for um, the retreat. And then she also sent an additional bag. And I just wanted to show you the bag that I ordered for myself. It's this little bag with the kitties at the movies. And it's so cute. And it's a good size bag. Um, the bottom is approximately four inches square, so that's that's nice. And then there's um, a number of pockets on the inside. It looks like there's four pockets of varying sizes on the inside, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there you go. So different varying pockets on the inside. They go all the way, all the way around. Some are a little bit smaller. Um, some are a little bit bigger. Oh, there's five pockets. So there's three on one side and two on the other. So very nice. And it's a drawstring bag, perfect for socks or any other small project. And very reasonably priced, too. I think this size bag was, I don't know, $12 or $14. So very, very cute. So those will be up on the website um, this week and I think that's all I have for you this week I am going to spend the rest of the evening just relaxing I um, I took the day today just to relax because I felt like I was coming down with a little bit of a cold and I didn't want to push myself too hard but I feel like I've wasted the entire day because it's after five o'clock and I have done absolutely nothing today so I'm going to sign off now and I will talk to you next week. I hope your knitting blooms this week and I hope mine does as well. I hope I have some finished objects to show you next week. So that's all for now and I will talk to you next week. Bye!